folks, it's time for some Natlin! The nation of Pyro continues to be one of the most mysterious nations in the entirety of Genshin lore, with hardly any information existing regarding its traditions and cultures. And today, I want to piece together what we know and investigate the theory of the current Pyro Archon not being Murata. Disclaimer, this is all just a theory and none of it is indicative of the final product. Furthermore, I stay away from leaks as best as I can and this video doesn't have any Natlin leaks or spoilers that I know of. So, let's begin. The Arkan quest for Natlin is titled as the Incandescent Ode of Resurrection, implying the rebirth of someone or something. And for this video, I want to propose a theory that the Maratha mentioned in the lore from thousands of years ago is long dead or incapacitated, and the current Pyro Archon is someone else that is fulfilling the role of Maratha. I also believe that Capitana's duty in Natlin is to find the Gnosis and find a way to bring back Maratha for some reason, with Agnidas Agate foreshadowing his demise. So, let's break the theory down. Number 1. I propose that Maratha is the Pyro Archon from thousands of years ago. From what we know about Natlin, Maratha is known as the Lady of Fire and presumably the God of War. Back in those days, warriors from every tribe would perform rites of combat and celebrate victories in her name. However, the current vagueness of the Lord doesn't completely confirm if she is the current Archon or is the previous Archon, much like Egeria. But I theorize that Maratha isn't the current Archon. Prior to the erasure of Rukadevta, it is told by the Lord that only Venti and Zhongli are amongst the original surviving Archons. The biggest evidence for this is in the manga. More than 1,000 years prior to the beginning of the game, Venti was talking to Vanessa regarding Maratha. He described her as the Lady of Fire and the Lady of War. But though he calls Vanessa a child of Maratha, Vanessa herself is unaware of who Maratha is. Venti further comments that Vanessa's elders should have taught their tribe regarding this, but Vanessa states that stories like that were the last of their priorities. However, the Talking Stick lore also mentions the Pyro Archon, but doesn't specifically say Maratha. The Talking Stick lore states the story of Tenok and his adventures throughout the hot springs and lava of Natlin. I quote, as Tenok gazed upon the vast burning plains, a turbid black tide welled up from the horizon. He blew his bronze horn and raised his colossal obsidian club to his shoulder, and thus did lonely Tenok go forth, traversing the rugged wilds where dragons roamed, that wilderness of hot springs and lava. During the timeline of this weapon's lore, the Mara Javari had yet to be created, but a Pyro Archon was already overseeing Natlin. According to the lore, for the stability of the tribes, it is possible to petition the Pyro Archon to vote for the expulsion of an individual from the tribes themselves. I believe that this Pyro Archon is Maratha, and the fact that this happened before the creation of the Mara Javari is important. Because number two, I believe that Maratha lost during the Black Tide War and died, her ashes stored in the Mara Javari. The Black Tide war, as I will call it, was described as a ferocious battle for the burning lands of Natlin, and there was, at some point, the mountains of darkness in the distance that fierce warriors dived into. However, I believe that this darkness eventually threatened Natlin, in which Maratha herself had to intervene. However, as according to the chapter storyline preview, the rules of war are woven in the womb. The victors shall burn bright, while the losers must turn to ash. I believe that Maratha lost this battle, which would explain why Vanessa didn't know about her, but why Venti, someone who has only woken up recently during the events of the manga, would be unaware that Maratha had passed away. This would also support the fact that the current Pyro Archon is not amongst the original seven according to the lore. Though, I believe that Venti's voice line regarding the Pyro Archon, being a wayward, warmongering wretch, is directed at Maratha and not the current one. But given that both are known as the God of War, I think the description would still apply. Furthermore, we know that the Talking Stick lore happens thousands of years ago because they mentioned that the Mara Javari was created in the later days. But according to the set of the Wanderer's Troop and the Lava Walker, individuals have already went through the Mara Javari thousands of years ago. The Mara Javari is described as a sea of ashes where the wind does not blow. And furthermore, within the Mara Javari is a proud phoenix that sings amid the flames. Legend has it that there exists a kind of solidarity bird. People worshipped it as a totem while king saw it as a sign of nobility. It's possible that this phoenix is Maratha's soul, which would also lead later into her Ars Goetia name. The name Phoenix is also present in the book, known as Phoenix or Phoenix. Phoenix teaches all wonderful sciences and hopes to return to heaven after 1,200 years. Furthermore, 
He is depicted as a bird which sings sweet notes with the voice of a child. So at the very least, the timeline is internally consistent with itself and we have a connection with the Mario Javari and the potential demon iteration of Morata. But that brings the question of who is the current Pyro Archon? I believe that the current Pyro Archon went into power years before Venti reawakened during the Cataclysm. I also believe that the current Pyro Archon is the one who fought for Natlan during the Cataclysm, not Morata. But the current iteration of the God of War is formally mentioned in Travail as the one who shares the secrets with the Traveler, because she has her reasons. I believe that this is also the Archon that speaks in the Agnidus Agate Gemstone. If you didn't know, the Ascension Gemstones have several pieces of dialogue that are from the current Archon. We know this because the Amethyst, which is the Electro Gem, contains a message of Beelzebul, not Baal, just by virtue of context clues, which means that the Agnidus Agate is most likely the current Pyrarchon regardless of who they are. The Agnidus Agate says, a pilgrimage for a wish, a battle to earn a name, burnt to cinders for a dream. If the intention yet remains, achieved blank's truth he has. With what little information to play with, I actually really like the speculation that the current Pyro Archon is talking about El Capitana's pilgrimage. If you didn't know already, Capitana is in Atlan and has engaged in the endless ring of war. What the purpose of this pilgrimage though, is currently unknown. But my theory for this one is number 4, Capitana has a goal of resurrecting the old Pyro Archon. Now for my personal speculations. I believe that Capitana's goal is to resurrect Murata by getting the Gnosis from the current Pyro Archon. Whether he's going to work with the Traveler though is currently unknown. However, I also do want to entertain the question of what if he's not trying to resurrect the old Pyro Archon but instead the Pyro Sovereign. But again, that's a story for another day. So what are the limitations to this theory? Well, number one, Murata is referred to as the god of war and the god of fire. The problem with me insinuating that there's another Archon is that the god of war title would be shared between them. When it comes to successors, we don't know if the previous Archon shares the same ideal as them. An example of this is Ajarius' ideal never being confirmed, but Makoto is also confirmed to be the god of eternity, just with a different facet. If I were to guess, I actually like the idea of the two gods of war being the different aspects of war. If you know Greek mythology, this would be similar to Athena and Ares, in which Ares, much like Murata, represented the harsher brutality or the ceremonial nature of war, while Athena represented the strategic side of war. This would also make sense if the current god of war is the one that gives the traveler the secrets. But another problem is that there is little information on what the darkness is or what's actually going on in Natlan. The biggest problem with Natlan is the lack of the lore and we don't know what we don't know. And while the theory does have the ability to stand on its own feet, the fascinating part of it is that it's really limited, all things considered. Everything in this lore right now and in this theory is very, very broad. So we're going to need to see what actually happens. Now for the other notes in this theory that I couldn't quite put in the main body. I said before that because of the themes of resurrection that are supposedly present in Atlan, I suggested Murata's Ars Goetia name is Phoenix. In my older videos, I also suggested this kind of name, which I still stand by. But for the new Archon, I want to suggest two names since God of Fire and whatnot. The first name was an old name that I suggested in one of my earlier videos, which was Furkas. He teaches philosophy, astronomy, rhetoric, logic, Pyromancy and Pyromancy. Fricas is depicted as an old man with white hair and long white beard who rides a horse while holding a sharp weapon. Another name that I want to propose is Aim or Haburim, who sets cities, castles, and great places on fire. He makes men witty in all ways and gives true answers concerning private matters. Both names would actually be appropriate for a god who supposedly gives secrets. But thematically speaking, Genshin does enjoy its two gods motif, which has been consistent since A and somewhat initiated at by Venti and the Nameless Bard. So the thought of Genshin repeating these motifs in a way of death isn't all too bad. Furthermore, I refrain from talking about the new generation of dragons that have coexisted with humans. This is crucial because in the manga, we know that Ursa the Drake was a dragon that terrorized both Mondstadt and Natlan only to be killed by Totoro. So it's not impossible that Natlan had these evolved dragons that also coexisted with humans through several generations, as mentioned by Nouvellette. And I want to theorize further that it was because of the current Pyro Archon's intervention. Whether or not this was more Murata isn't completely necessary, but I like the idea that Natlan followed the more primitive ways of the old civilization of Devat and treated war as an extension to human instinct in capacity. Conversely, the dragons would see war as a form of strength and camaraderie, which they can respect as individuals. This would, in a way, explain why the dragons were able to peacefully quote-unquote coexist with the humans. 
But another note that I want to share is the possibility that the God of War mentioned in the Travail video is actually Maratha herself. It's completely possible that the whole purpose of resurrection is for Murata to share the secrets with the Traveler for whatever reason she has. This could mean that the current Pyro Archon could be a hindrance to that mission or could try and assist the Traveler, but some could criticize that plotline as being too similar to the others where the successor is an instrument to the previous Archon's plans. If I were to shake it up, I actually like the theory that the current Pyro Archon beat Murata in a battle previously for the title, but that's a story for another day. So to summarize this theory again, I believe that the Murata mentioned in the manga is dead, and the current Pyro Archon is someone else. Capitano's job is to get the Gnosis back and find a way to resurrect the previous Pyro Archon and or the Dragon Sovereign. But that's it for me today. What are your thoughts on this theory? And do you think maybe the Pyro Archon is someone else altogether? Anyway, my name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me. By the by, I would like to announce a little thing, a little project of mine. If you didn't know, I am a communications research student, and what better way to weaponize my knowledge of different kinds of quantitative methods than to actually perform a survey. So today I'm going to be showing you guys the first survey of many, many surveys that I have planned, and it's called Genshin Fans Don't Read. A survey on lore exposure, consumption, and dissemination of Genshin Impact fans. I want to see just how much you know about the lore, also on what you actually consume in terms of the lore, and the results are very fascinating. I'm going to give this survey a week of response time period, I guess, before I show you guys all of the survey. And if you're interested, I'm going to, well, I'm gonna do the results in front of you all. Anyway, that's it for me today. Bye bye